Adventures. I'm Karen Ahmed and I'm so excited today. As you can see, I'm in the Bahamas. Yes! Well, not really a virtual Bahamas is all I can get today. But I'm here to introduce my amazing friend. She is from the Bahamas. She is. She started off as a home cook but became a chef. She's a legit chef, guys. She is amazing at what she does. She teaches at George Brown College. She has a book called uh, Dining in Paradise. And you can see her regularly on CTV on your morning. She is an amazing person, a great personality. I met her a couple of years ago. Oh, sorry. No, it wasn't a couple of months ago. And the two of us had coffee and we were like this in no time. So my friend, Chef Raquel Fox, is one foxy lady. And today, <laughs> she is going to show us a very typical dish from the Bahamas, which I'm so excited to learn. So thank you so much for gracing us with your presence, my darling. Well, thank you so much for having me here on Craving Food. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this, guys. You know... Karen, first of all, I must say that was a sunny, warm weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking everyone today on a wonderful sail away excursion to the Bahamas virtually <laughs> with one of our typical, as, as Karen says, very authentic dish called Bohemian steamed chicken, which is really a tomato based dish. It happens to be zesty, tangy, a perfect balance of uh, a little salty, sweet in there. And for those of you who love spicy, you can make it spicy. Or for my uh, much milder Canadian friends, it doesn't have to be spicy because we're just going to drop a whole scotch bonnet in this fabulous mm -hmm. tomato-based sauce. And really, when you do that, you get the flavor of this um, skin off the pepper and not the seed, which, you know, we all know is where the heat relies on, right? So to get started, I hope you guys are ready. This dish will become one of your family's favorite, I guarantee you, just as it is mine. And if you love, um, you can make uh, steamed fish if you're a seafood lover. Um, you can go ahead if you're a vegetarian and steam your vegetables. This is what we do. This is the basic bohemian sauce. And you it, also mentioned, sorry to interrupt you, but you also mentioned that you could make this with mutton. Is that? Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. You know, you and I, Karen. We love we our mutton. Are mutton, <laughs> <laughs> mutton lovers. And I know for those of you who don't know what mutton is, Mutton is lamb meat that's two years old and over, all right? And it's just beautiful when it's cooked right. Tender, falling, off the bone, or you can um, cook mutton without bone, <laughs> you know? So it's a beautiful dish. So yes, are we ready to get started? I'm ready, let's go. Okay, so first and foremost, Bohemians believe strongly in seasoning and marinating all meats before um, it's cooked. You know, some people will just add chicken and then a little salt and pepper. No, we believe no, in no, no, no. perfect marination for the flavor. And all, as we say, good to the bone, delicious. <laughs> all right, so I have, a, well, dark feet here. I have a thigh and a leg. And um, all I did to this, and you can see this, right? All I did here was just uh, dry it off, clean it, dry it off. We do take the time to remove um, some of the fat from it. We leave a little, just a little, because we believe that fat flavors meat and um, also add that delicious succulent moisture that we love so much, all right? So, and you'll leave the skin on to it, I guess, eh? What's that, Karen? Did you leave the skin on? We leave the skin on in this dish, and I'll show you why in a few minutes, okay? Okay. So, for our seasoning mix, and it's so much better to just combine and, and mix your own seasoning mixes other than buying a, a seasoned salt out of the supermarket because it's so much more aromatic, so much more flavorful. 
So the salt of the islands happened to be sea salt. And I love using it. The flavor that it gives me, you know, takes me back to memories of my childhood. So we have some fine sea salt here. This is about two tablespoons. So I'm going in with two tablespoons of fine sea salt, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon, actually a half a teaspoon of ground cumin, and one teaspoon of smoked paprika. My favorite. Oh yeah. So My this favorite. is, I wish you guys can smell already what I'm smelling here. You know what I love about this already? It's like just ingredients that everybody has in their pantry. So we could make this today. Exactly, exactly. And that's what it's about, right? Quarantine cooking. <laughs> Absolutely. And another wonderful thing about this sauce is, Karen, even if you have already uh, cooked rotisserie in your refrigerator, don't, you know, let it dry out or go to waste. This sauce perks it up and bring that wonderful lusciousness back to a dish and, and it looks like a brand new meal. Your family won't know the difference. <laughs> I've done it many times. <laughs> brand new meal. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. Oops. Okay. All right. So I have, just because it's, it's one thigh and a leg here, um, if I'm basically preparing a whole chicken, I would use a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, but basically I'm just going to go in with like a tablespoon, you know, I'm just demoing, showing you how to season this. All right. Once I have my red wine, my red wine vinegar in, I'm just going to go in with my seasoned salt, season the skin side, turn it over to the other side and season thoroughly. All over the skin, the meat. Sometimes I even pull back the skin just to make sure I get every part. And the wonderful thing about this seasoning is, you know, it doesn't have to marinate for long. I mean, a half hour or so. And you know what? I've been known many times if I'm running late for dinner to just season it and the season goes through that quickly. And I'm telling you, you know, I don't know if you do this in your culture, but when we're home at our dinner table, we chew the bone. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we make sure it's good to the bone. My Sorry, favorite is guys, the neck bone. Do. I love the neck bone of the chicken. Love it. Oh yes. My favorite. Oh, yes. The neck bone. And you know, when I'm teaching uh, culinary, we always have to cut away the backbone, but in Caribbean culture, we actually love that stuff. <laughs> you know, um, speaking of George Brown, I did a, a continuing ed culinary course. I did two courses at George Brown. And oh. uh, one, of my, one of my instructors was a French chef. And do you know that they eat the chicken butt? The, the I'm back. sorry? The butt, the butt oh, of the yes, chicken. Yes. It's, yes. A, it's a delicacy in France. He well, said my mother would hate it if <laughs> so everyone has their own thing, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> I toss it, but well, you it's know. a delicacy with um, among some behemoths as well. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So I go in with uh, a mixture of canola and olive oil because we really don't need a, a very high smoke point. Right. And what I'm doing is simply just searing the chicken on both sides, which we call browning the chicken. Right. And you know, you can decide whether you would cook this chicken about, I would say about 80% of the way because we want to finish the chicken off in this wonderful sauce. So for those who are very health conscious as well and, and th who don't really have the time if you're cooking a lot of this, let's say you're cooking two whole chicken, Karen, you can always put this in on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, put it in the oven at 350 degrees and cook the chicken until, you know, it's about 80, 90% or even well done and then add it to the sauce and just let it steam for five minutes. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing. So okay. we would, as that sizzle, we just place the chicken in there and let it brown on both sides, approximately three to four minutes. But as I said, if you want it to cook through a bit longer, um, never overcrowd your pan. Two pieces of chicken would be perfect. So I'm adding that there. 
So is this going to be uh, your husband's lunch then today? Oh, um, sorry, the volume is a little low. I'm going to make sure I'm hearing you with all this I said, going on here. I, no, I said, is this going to be Ruben's lunch today? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Put that over there. Okay, so basically, you're going to let it brown. Three minutes on both sides. Now let's talk about, while this is going on here, let's talk about our ingredients that's going in the sauce. So I have all of my prep ingredients already, uh, as we say in culinary school, uh, mise en place, which yes. means everything in its place is all ready. So I have one medium uh, sweet onion slice. It's my choice. You can use a red onion or, you know, Spanish onion, but I love the wonderful sweet uh, Vandea type of onion. And then uh, you go in with about half of the green bell pepper. You can go in with half red bell pepper. I love using the colors, the variety, but you have what you have in your refrigerator. You don't have to run into the supermarket. If you have green bell pepper, red bell pepper, whatever combination is fine. I also go ahead with a half of uh, orange bell pepper sliced as well, a half of yellow bell pepper, and then I have four cloves of garlic that I've minced. Now I'm a garlic lover. So sometimes I go in with six cloves because I love that garlic, that garlicky flavor. More garlic, the better. Yes. So um, yes, I have half a cup of ketchup. Everyone goes ketchup. Yes. Yeah. Ketchup happens to be the sweetener and the thickener in the island. Okay. And it is zesty goodness in this sauce. And then we have two cups of ripe diced tomatoes. I prefer to use the canned tomatoes because they you can find them ripe all the time. Uh, I find that in supermarkets, you pick up tomatoes, even though it appears to be very ripe, when you get home, it's not as juicy, it's not as ripe, you know? So I prefer to use um, just two cups out of the can, and I use also some of the juice, the tomato juice. And then, of course, the herb of the island, fresh thyme leaves. Oh, I I'm love using thyme. About <laughs> two tablespoons of it, yes. And uh, I have a bay leaf, and of course, my scotch bonnet chili that's going in whole. I also have about a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. I have one tablespoon of molasses. And we're gonna have some diced Italian parsley for garnish. And our liquid is just going to be chicken, two cups of chicken broth, okay? And that's what's going to make the sensational sauce. Now, I think we get the gist of how brown, turn it down a bit, we want our chicken to be plopping up here. So I'm just gonna get a plate. Just transfer this to this plate. So we have a bit of residue from the seasoning, but that's absolutely fine, guys. This is hot enough, and we're going in with our onions. and all of our bell peppers. So we have our green, our red, orange, yellow. Well, that's a Bahamas carnival right there. Right? Doesn't this look like carnival already? Like, yep. hello, <laughs> or junk canoe? <laughs> I actually have a carnival, a giant carnival decoration that we got from the Bahamas. From, really? Yes, it's. I, I wish I could show it to you. After this thing is over, it's a piece of art. It really is. Oh, wow. It's all you handmade. That out. <laughs> I know. You know what? Maybe the next time we do a video, I'll dance in the background with it. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You'll bring the visual. I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay. So the wonderful thing about um, 
one part dishes like this is that all the flavor, all the seasoning, the seasoning from just searing that chicken, if you were searing a whole chicken, you know, all the flavor is just infusing into these onions and these bell peppers. And we have what's called, um, if you, oh, I got a little stuff to the bottom. Don't panic. Deglazing, guys. So this wonderful stock is going, once I add this, is going to pick up all that seasoning, all those wonderful pieces from the bottom of your pan. Okay? So, and I love carefree, easy dishes Me like too. this, you know, because you and I, Karen, we're very busy family women, right? <laughs> Career, very uh, busy. family life, you know, so. Videos. Yes. <laughs> Social media, crazy. Okay, so now a lot of people love to really cook their vegetables down. I guess the chef in me loves it a bit more al dente, which is firm to the tooth. I want my vegetables, you know, um, not really come down where they're completely withered. I want them to have life. I want them to still look very vibrant. I so totally agree. I'm going to go ahead now with my minced garlic. And so I'm using, um, or I'm adding minced garlic after all of the vegetables, simply because Karen, you know, garlic doesn't take any time to cook one minute and it's fine. And one pet peeve of mine is I can't stand burnt pieces of garlic. It's bitter. And yep. we don't want that. <laughs> yep. And we're garlic lovers. Okay. So I wish Karen that you had a smell of vision connection uh, here. I'm imagining it. <laughs> okay. But tell me, tell me about your book while you're doing that. Oh, so, okay. I'll add my tomatoes so okay. they can release I'm their juices while we're discussing the cookbook. But yes, dining in paradise. So it's actually, you know, one of my, I guess, best achievements, I would say right now, because I really dedicated to two women who just meant the world to me, my grandmother who raised me and my wonderful mother-in-law who passed away a few years back, um, lost a fight to breast cancer. But um, I wanted to honor them with this cookbook of you know authentic bohemian recipes that we all grew up with and ironically this is the first cookbook of its kind bohemian cookbook in over 30 years karen really it's long overdue so where can we get where can we get them where is it available? amazon right okay. now you can just order on amazon guys this is a wonderful buy because it's over 150 recipes wow 150 recipes we have i'm talking brunches i'm talking um uh appetizers galore i'm talking dinner beautiful wonderful lots of sensational chicken seafood mutton dishes in here <laughs> and if that's not enough the best in island desserts and cocktails. Oh, you sold me. That's <laughs> it. I'm going to Amazon right now. Yes. <laughs> so guys, Amazon dining in paradise. And um, yes, I'm very, I'm very proud of this cookbook. And um, you'll find me uh, on a monthly basis on CTV in the morning. I've done a media tour promoting the cookbook. And we continue to make sensational brunches, appetizers, parties, um, cocktails, you know, we have a blast. And Karen, I'm actually um, going on live, CTV Your Morning, on the, I believe it's a Monday, the 25th. All awesome. right, we're going to be, uh, I guess it's going to be sensational brunches again. I mean, during this time, we all get up for brunch. <laughs> are you going Are you going to be back in the studio? Are you going to be doing this No, it's on, going on to be video. broadcast. Yes, from my home, from my very own kitchen. That's you awesome. Know. That's this awesome what people normal. are doing. Yeah, it's a new normal. You're right. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so this is looking really good. And you know, the tomatoes just need about three to five minutes to release its juices. Very flavorful. And now I'm going in with the thickener and sweetener of the island ketchup. Half a, half a cup. <laughs> And we have a Worcestershire sauce. 
Do you say Worcestershire? Wow, that's a tricky one, isn't it? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's tricky to say and it's tricky to spell. Yeah. <laughs> So, I love it though. I love I it. I put it in a in a barbecue brisket and it's amazing. Absolutely. Oh, that brisket you did, girl. Oh, I love it. So that good. That has my name on it for that summer it, barbecue. Yes. For sure. <laughs> okay. So molasses, a tablespoon going in. And you know, it's going to give this dish. It's not going to be sweet. It's just going to make it have just a wonderful balance of that savory, um, you know, like that dark brown sugar. And, you know, we say in the, in the Caribbean that brown sugar is not a sweetener. It's a seasoning. It's a spice. <laughs> <laughs> we use it as a balance. <laughs> okay. So now that this is going on, I want to bring this up to a boil. And I'm going to go in with my chicken broth. Now, you can eyeball this in as well, guys, because I want a sauce that is going to coat the back of the spoon. When you visit the Bahamas, some people would want a thinner sauce. I love thicker type of gravy, you know? So I always eyeball, and when you turn it up, to a boil before you lower it to simmer, you're going to get your perfect consistency. I mean, look at this already. Just vibrant colors. The, the smell is just resonating throughout my kitchen and the flavor is everything. And don't now, worry guys, the recipe is going to be linked in the description box below, as well as in the post. Uh, so you can follow that recipe on Chef Raquel's channel for all of that. Yes. Island Girl Foods, guys. Island Girl Foods, girl spelled with a U, G, R, ah, that's right. TV. <laughs> now, I took the liberty to speed up the process, so I seared a whole chicken. So I'm actually cooking dinner early for once. <laughs> so uh -huh. the whole chicken is seared. And I love um, the fact of doing a whole, of, of preparing a whole chicken. Because, you know, some people are white meat eaters in your family. Some people are dark meat eaters. Some want to wing, mm, you know, so... This is a variety for everyone. And so now that um, my sauce here, this is the traditional steam sauce coming up to a boil, I'm going to add in my chicken. How many pieces, like what's the weight of that chicken approximately? Oh, basically, um, the breast is cut into two pieces. And of course I remove the leg from the thigh and uh, the wings are removed, so. So it's a whole chicken. <laughs> That's good. Wholesome meal. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we're all about Sunday dinners, especially in the island. And this dish is usually, I mean, we have to have a, a star chicken dish on the menu in our family. And wow. this dish is usually on the buffet. That <laughs> or is in a looking family style amazing. Setting. Yes. Look at that. Amazing. And this is what I'm tell I'm saying to you, Karen, that if you already had um, a baked chicken um, that you prepared earlier in the week and you just happened to prepare more than usual and it's sitting there, at the end of the week on Friday, make this steam sauce and wake up that chicken. You know, the flavor is all about this sauce. And I'm telling you that with this dish, even though I say season to taste with salt and pepper at the end, I never have to do that because it's all the seasoning that's in this chicken that's basically, you know, uh, resonating in this whole uh, one dish right now. And the flavor is always spot on. It's always perfect. It looks pretty damn perfect to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it makes a wonderful um, impression. It'll be the, the piece de resistance of your table. <laughs> yeah. Plus, like you mentioned, when you said it was on a buffet, it, I think it's a lovely dish to also serve at a party because it is so colorful. Uh, yes. Flavor aside, it's just so beautiful to look at. Yes. It really is the islands on a plate, isn't it? It really is. And, you know, many of my friends request this if they're having a potluck party. Oh, please, can you bring the Bahamas steamed chicken? Right. <laughs> you know, so, and it's so easy to put together. So... so 
So it's called a steamed chicken, but it can really be anything, roasted, barbecue. Yeah, and I guess more so the steaming process, right? So when we add a whole scotch bonnet, in the island, they just usually throw the sprigs in right. and the thyme leaves fall off, but I've also picked some. I have a bay leaf here as well. So just go in with some thyme leaves and the thyme, the thyme makes a huge difference, huge difference with flavor, um, releasing in this sauce. So. And I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the dried thyme versus mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the fresh, I mean you just can't beat fresh. I love fresh, the flavor. As soon as you open up the package from the supermarket, the, the, the aroma is like, <laughs> <laughs> love it. I agree, I agree. And so, steaming, the, the, I guess the origin of whole the steaming process is we cover it slightly ajar with a lid. And what are we getting from here? It's steaming the chicken, right? Because it's hot. Uh, so we're steaming it in this sauce, hence the title, Steam Sauce. <laughs> Makes and sense. Uh, because I, I cook this chicken pretty much, I would say 90%. Now, chicken is cooked when it's at its um, internal temperature, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So before you offer your guests, and you know, a lot of people dull this cell how do i tell when the chicken is perfectly cooked well us islander and and experienced cooks like karen we can just prick with a fork and it just goes straight down to the bone we know it's ready or when the juices runs clear that's how we tell but if you're not sure or secure um and knowing if your chicken is cooked then you really need to use a thermometer and when you insert it, you want to insert it into a breast meat, the thickest part. Don't touch the bone. And it's going to read if it arrives at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's going. Okay, my breast is still cooking away. Let me see, check my thigh. Okay. And, and make sure you do have a working thermometer because I purchased these things and it's like broken. Yeah. <laughs> That's another important thing. I don't <laughs> even have one. I just go by... I have a meat thermometer. Is this the same thing? Yeah, yes. No, yes. oh, I have a plug-in one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, there's different types of thermometer. There's the candy ones that you're you're making your chocolate. And you want to tamper, and you clip clip it on the side of your your pot. So, okay, we're almost there. So this is what we do. We just bathe this in this wonderful scrumptious sauce and it's getting thicker all the seasoning is going into the sauce it's becoming a perfect marriage right now the scotch bonnet is lending its wonderful uh flavor without adding um you know that heat that you know a lot of people uh, tend to run away from you know it's interesting that um i also teach at various cooking schools around toronto and whenever I enter, the first thing they say to the Caribbean chef, uh, chef, not too spicy, please. Yeah. I get this. I get the same thing with Indian food. Right? <laughs> not too spicy. It's, it's, no, Bohemian cuisine is more about a balance of flavor. Um, other than other cuisines, like Jamaican cuisine, we tend to go more for spicy, right? We want a spicy jerk and, and different, yeah. um, you know, recipes like that. But this is a beautiful balance, guys. Savory, zesty, and you guys have to try this. So, this is pretty much done. And how we serve, and this, you know this, Karen, like I said, my vegetables are deliciously al dente and still, you know, it's going to have a nice uh, bite to it. 
and um, the color is still there. So when I, you know, show my presentation on the table, everyone- It because, looks fantastic. You know, we put our eyes first, right? Absolutely, it looks amazing. So, so here, here we have it, guys. Bahamas steamed chicken. And I usually pair it. I have some steamed white rice here. This is what we usually pair it with, but we're also known to pair it with a delicious Caribbean uh, mashed potato. Those are the potatoes with that pinkish reddish skin, guys. And it is absolutely delicious. If you love mashed potatoes, try using the Caribbean. I'm looking over to see if I have a example here, but I used it all up. It doesn't last in my house because everyone loves it. So it's wonderful over mashed potatoes. So Amazing. And um, as I mentioned, even if you wanted an all protein dish and you just wanted to go for it with this on any time of the year, this is the perfect it's dish. Fantastic. So. Thank you so much. Before we go, can you let everybody know where they can find you on Facebook, on YouTube, what your future plans are? Okay. And we'd love to know. All right. So guys, as I mentioned, follow me on IG, Facebook, Island Girl, spelled G-U-R-L, Foods TV. And, um, oh gosh, so I'm on CTV this coming uh, May 25th. Tune in early your morning and a wonderful event coming up, guys. It's at Aviv Immigrant Kitchen. My friends, Robert Chi and Maria Perez, they have an amazing restaurant. And we got together, decided during this time, let's, you know, give their customers and take Toronto to the islands, the Bahama Islands, that is. Wow. So we're going to have a Bahama day. It's going to be a nice drive up and, and you can pre-order. I'm placing the menu out um, this coming week and uh, you can order lettuce cook. It's going to be on a Sunday, May 31st. Save the date, May 31st. Don't cook. Come and support these wonderful, hardworking people, guys. Keep their restaurants afloat during this time. Um, me as their friend, I want to give it all. I want to give it my all. I want to take everyone to the Bahamas. Um, as a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, I want to try more Bohemian cuisine. And we don't have any Bohemian restaurants here in Toronto, but you guys have the Bohemian yes. chef. We have you. Girl. We have you. Don't worry, I will, I will have everything it. up on all of the details, guys, in case you didn't catch that. I'll make sure to publish that on Cravings Food Adventures on Facebook as well as Cravings Food Adventures on YouTube. So you'll have all of those details. Like she said, please go support this. It's a really good cause. And why not? You're going to get amazing food. Amazing. Have you tried conch before, Karen? No, I have not. Oh my goodness. This will be your first time to oh, have some conch delicious, fritters. delicious conch fritters, huh? Awesome. Me, I look forward to it. away with me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. As you know, I love you. We got along like a house on fire. And we yes. talked about doing a collaboration many, many times. But here we are on Zoom. And I hope oh. after this craziness is over, you know, I would love to have you over and treat you to some Indian food. I some love mutton, Indian maybe food. mutton. <laughs> you will make my day, okay? Love. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Love well, it. thank you so much, guys, for joining us on Craving Food Adventures. Thank you, my love. And um, we will see a lot more of you on YouTube, on Facebook, <laughs> online, on CTV. You're just everywhere. So you're amazing. Keep doing that amazing stuff. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for having me. And I hope that you will also come on Jump on Island Girl and, and teach us a nice curry. You know, yep. we love yep. curry in the island. For so sure. For India sure. Curry, I love. So, guys. Remember, keep social distancing, stay safe out there until we all can get over this and, and be back to our normal lives. We're all looking forward to it. But in the meantime, our health matters, our family's health matters, and we want to do the right thing and listen to, you know, when the country slowly opens back up again and follow For the sure. rules. Stay home, stay safe. <laughs> Take care, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.